If you've seen my channel before, you know I love making game tutorials. And for any reason, the most popular ones are the tic-tac-toe related ones. So I wanted to code a new type of tic-tac-toe. Different, bigger, more challenging and more fun. So I decided to code a tic-tac-toe with two additional game modes, Ultimate and Max. Both with 81 and 729 squares respectively instead of the boring 9 squares. So I created a new python file with the starting pi game setup and I started by creating the game screen with dimensions of 729 pixels by 729 pixels. I choose that number because 729 is 3 to the power of 6 and I wanted my screen dimensions to be a factor of 3 as boards have 3 rows and 3 calls. I then filled my game screen with the background color and I was ready to continue with the game logic. So the first thing I wanted to do was to render the graphic board on the screen that I previously created. Now if we were talking about the classic tic-tac-toe game, this part wouldn't be hard at all, as rendering the board is just drawing the four main lines of the game. However, we are talking about a game that has two more game modes and those game modes require way more than only four lines. Now for example, let's say we're talking about the max tic-tac-toe game mode, we will need one main board, nine medium boards and 81 small boards. So the board itself will look something like this. We have the main board, for each of the nine squares of the main board we have one medium board and for each of the nine squares of the medium board we have one small board. So if we quickly do some maths, we have one main board with four lines, nine medium boards with 36 lines in total, and 81 small boards with 324 lines in total. So we're talking about a game board that has 364 lines rendered on screen. So of course I didn't hard code 364 lines, instead of that I use a recursive algorithm to achieve all the lines needed for any specific game mode. So the algorithm consists of the following, first I looked each of the potential squares of the board, and I say potential because when playing the ultimate or the max game mode, we could have squares that are actually boards. So for each square on the board being looped, I checked if that square was actually a board. And if that was true, I used recursion and called the algorithm again but with the board being checked. And I did this until I reached the terminal case which was finding an actual square of the board being looped. Once I reached a terminal case, I could just render the four lines of the board. Obviously, this algorithm helped me to reduce the amount of code needed to render a board. However, working with recursion is kind of hard, so you'll see that I had some bugs when coding it. After a couple of bugs, I managed to render the ultimate board perfectly on screen. However, to see if my algorithm really worked, I needed to also test it with the max game mode. Next step was to start marking the squares each time a player clicked on them. As the max board have squares inside of squares inside of squares, this was definitely not easy at all. For example, let's suppose the player wants to mark the square on the middle. The steps in order to achieve this are the following ones. First, find the square's array position. Second, check if the square is empty. Third, mark the square with the respective figure. Four, check the self board win. And five, check the parent's board win. Now, steps two, three, and four were actually pretty easy. However, steps one and five were actually pretty hard. I spent a decent amount of time in these two steps. In order to get the position of the click square, I had to come with a recursive algorithm. Video doesn't show this, but I spent approximately 2-3 to three hours just trying to get the algorithm to work. 
I needed to apply the algorithm at the beginning of each method that required a specific square to work with. So for example, I needed the algorithm before checking if a square was empty, also before marking a square, and also before drawing a specific figure on that square. This is an example of the method that checks if a square is empty or not with the algorithm that I'm talking about. As you can see, the method is not so long, however, as I told you, I spent more than two hours on it. The next methods were actually easy to code, as I had the algorithm. After a couple of minutes, I was able to mark squares with crosses. However, I was missing circles, so I proceed to code that also. At this point, I had a good percentage of the game done, and I was just missing checking and drawing wins. But before that, I needed to check if the code was working on the max game mode also. And as you can see, it was working perfectly. I proceed to code the board's winning logic, and as I told you, these had two steps. The first one, an easier one, was checking a win inside of the board that the player recently clicked. The second one, and complex one, was checking if there was a win inside of the parent's board. So for example, let's suppose we are in this situation, I didn't draw crosses to make it simple, so after the circle player marks the following square, the first step is to check if there is a win on the current board. In this case there is, so the method needs to mark that win. Now in this case there is also a win on the big board, which in this case is the main board, so that will be the second step, to check if there is a win on the big board, or as I call it, the parent board. After a couple of bugs, I was able to start drawing the vertical wins inside of the click board. It was working perfectly, so I proceed to code the horizontal and diagonal wins also. At this point, I was able to check and draw all the possible wins inside of the click board, so I was ready to test it on the max board game mode. So as you can see, it was working perfectly, but I also wanted to test it on the classic tic-tac-toe board. And no surprises, it was working fine. Next step was to start checking the parent's board win. However, I first needed to render a bigger figure when there was a win on the clicked board. In order to do this, I first added a transparent screen on top of the clicked board to show that that board was now unavailable as it had a win. Once I had the transparent screen working fine, I started working on rendering the big figure on top of this transparent screen.
I was so confused at this point because I didn't know how, and I'm being honest, I literally had no idea why the parents were rendering win was working fine. At this point, I was literally missing some small design things to fully finish the game, as the logic part was complete at this point. I added an ultimate winning screen that renders when one of the players wins on the main board, and it looked awesome. Of course, I needed to test the game with the three different game modes, so I proceeded and tested it with the Max and the Classic game mode. Finally, I wanted to test the game against another person, so I invited a friend and we started playing against each other. The game is definitely fun to play against someone else, but I have to say that it has the same problem as the classic tic-tac-toe, it is pretty easy to tie. So if both players have a good understanding about the game, after a couple of matches the result between them will probably be a tie 95% of the times, same as the classic tic-tac-toe. So yeah. It was pretty fun to code these, it required good coding logic behind, so yeah if you would like to have a tutorial for this game, make sure to comment down below and if I see a lot of people interested on learning how to code it, I will definitely make a tutorial on it. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.